Hey, gang, welcome to the Chrissy Salmon Brownie podcast. Some spicy stuff in there today. Oh, yeah, Nathan Broad came in. I'm just falling mm. more and more in love with him. What a funny, quick, excellent Bogan. guy. Just gorgeous. He's a bargain. Owes us a lot of money, too. The mm. great Eddie Perfect joined us. Misty Chrissy. Oh, mate. Wow. Misty Chrissy was on fire today. We revealed that Jack sounds like a creep in his Daniel say. Donut Daniel's Donuts Are you talking about when he goes, yummy chocolate? Haunting. Was also, he voice altered? In that? No. There's something wrong with it. And Dwayne Russell, too. We need to get him a diabetes test. Oh, yes. His pre-commentary oh, meal geez. is astonishing. Also, special mention to uh, the star of the breakout hit uh, on 10, Hunted. Oh, yeah. Dr. David Craig, what a fascinating interview he is. Did you mention Craig David at least once during that interview or not? No, uh, missed by us. We'll have to get him back in. Missed what? by us, I know. Jesus. Sleep at the wheel. Enjoy. Brownie, the podcast. Morning, Melbourne. Welcome to your Monday. Morning, Christine. How are you? Look, distracted a little bit. Yes. I've had one of those situations where one of my children, Peg, has been up in the night vomiting and. Oh, she's a tough one, all too. All sorts. That's an yes, issue. Yes, I know. She's a toughie, but. Um, yeah, so I don't really know what day it is. Allegedly, it's Monday. Swanee. Remember, as, remember as a kid when you get sick and your folks would say, well, your mum particularly would say, right, I take the bucket to bed. Yeah. Put the bucket beside the bed. Yes. Did you do that? I didn't because she wasn't feeling sick until the middle of the night. Oh, kill me. It was no two good. in the morning and uh, and she woke up, you know, when you're scared and oh, crying. Yeah, oh, yeah. God, I, I'm so familiar. Mm. Um, but she did it very neatly, straight to the toilet. Oh, well done, There was Peg. no cleaning up. Good on you, Peg. But, yeah, it's been a rough night. So, Swanee, so, we'll get you through today. But uh, I'm sorry to tell you, but Mystic, you're going to have to use your brain for Mystic. Chris. I know. I'm mm. going to have to get into gear. Plus, today yeah. is the day that I start my 300 kilometres. kilometers I can't even speak. Kilometres. Kilometres. Magnificent. For Fred Hollow's uh, foundation. Where twenty five dollars can save the sight of someone with avoidable blindness. That's pretty impressive. That's wild. I know it is wild. If you want it, so it's look. It's it's not ideal that I've got to not, somehow knock over ten or twelve kilometres today when I've got a family full of sick kids. But I will do it. Day one, because I'm a champion. If you want to get behind me, I would love it. Uh, you can go to my Instagram page and click on the link in my bio to donate. Yes, John. I trust you had a good. Good new runners on. Yeah, I do. Great. Yeah, I do. Fantastic. I've got new runners and I've got my um, balaclava. <laughs> I'm worn out. My don't rob anyone. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Whether you've been craving the ocean, snow, mountains or city lights, there are so many possibilities for you and your next trip. Make up for missed holidays and explore more of Oz with whatif.com. Jump online or on the What If app. What If? It's Aussie for travel. Good morning, Melbourne. Hope you had a lovely weekend. It is Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Over 100. If you're going on holidays, what if it? It's nuts, that website. 132410, when should you have lost your job? All of us have made errors Oh yeah. Uh, in our careers and jobs mm. and part-time jobs, casual jobs, particularly casual jobs, I reckon. Yeah. That's where you make your lion's share of errors. Yeah. And somebody um, has... Probably narrowly avoided losing their job this weekend. Ash Barty got married in a surprise... I see that, ...wedding yes. ceremony. She met the, her, her beau on the golf course. Did she? There you go, years ago, the same golf car course we, I remember that. Did we ever get uh, get to the bottom of her reinventing herself after tennis as a golf pro? No, she's not playing. She's not doing no, that. No, she said that. She said everyone thinks she's doing that, but she's not. She might eventually. Might down the track. Yeah. I think she wants to help the underprivileged kids up north. Great. Huge. That's huge. Uh, but uh, she's obviously, it's a secret ceremony. And how it works often is you, you do that. Mm. Um, you know, if you're a big time sports star like her, you do that and then you release a photograph mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, uh, official lines that the publications have to follow. Right. So credits where credit's due if she hasn't paid for a dress right, okay. or whatever. And some of that's a bit icky yeah, yeah, yeah. and nobody really, it's I'm sure, deal, I'm sure Ash doesn't want people to know that, mm -hmm. that that's part of the deal. Um, but the photograph was posted. It's a beautiful photo of her and her new husband Did crossing a bridge in a beautiful dress. Yeah. Underneath it, the caption is not 
Ash Barty marries her longtime sweetheart, yes. Gaz. Yes. It says, mm. warning, not for online till Barty posts first on social media. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Craddock in comma. Crash. Dorno. Do you oh, know I him? Know Crash. He's Crash Craddock. Okay, he's a cricket journalist, right. so he doesn't swim in these areas. Well, he's had the exclusive. <laughs> oh, really? He doesn't swim in these waters. <laughs> he's, Robert, right. he's a he's he's an alligator in uh, in Australia. He doesn't swim in these no. waters. Robert Craddock in in brackets, mm. Jorno, J O R N O, oh. not Jorno. <laughs> mm. And, like, we know who Robert Craddock is. they get this work experience kid from? I know. Robert Craddock, Jorno, will come back to us with the time we can post. <laughs> this is all in capitals. Oh, yes. Warning. This is all part of the headline uh, or the, the by the, the subheadline, the caption. The caption under the photo. Oh, yes. So it should just say Ash Barty marries her longtime this boyfriend. This is magnificent. Mm. Um, warning. Weekend Telegraph special. Must talk with pick Ed, Jeff Darman, before publishing. Ash Barty and Gary Kissick got married in July in Queensland with their families and close friends in attendance. Ash's dress is from Suzanne Harwood. Must credit. (laughs) (laughs) Magnificent. Isn't it magnificent? Can you imagine the phones going as soon as it went live? It's like... Get this down! Get this down! Crash, you putz. He he would have gone right off Crash. What a putz. Well, I don't think it's his fault. It's not Crash's fault. No, it's sorry, his hush, fault. hush. It's whoever the uh, it's whoever the cadet journalist <laughs> is who's who's been tasked with that. And sometimes, you know, the job is too big for your pay grade. Oh, yes. A- as was, uh, you know, the case here. I remember once when I was working at the supermarket, thirteen twenty four ten. By the way, yes. when should you have lost your job? Yeah. Um, I was working at the supermarket, Tucker Bag in Armidale. Mm. I don't think it's there anymore. It's not Tucker Bag. No, exist definitely anymore. not. It'll be an IGA or something. Um, just out the back of Glenferry Road. And I was on bakery duty, right? Yeah. Because it's got a fresh bakery with all fresh bread, mm-hmm. but someone's got to bake it yeah. or there's nothing to buy. Yeah. So that was my job. And um, I just Well, you're going to have to bake it yeah, as yeah, well. To, yeah. So all these ovens are there. And they come pre, you know, made and little whatever. dough balls. Yeah, but you, you know, you bake Stick it and then you make them cool and you get them in the bag and mm. you tag them and all that sort of stuff. Um, anyway, I slept in big night, whatever. I was mm. nineteen, mm. and uh, there was no bread that whole <laughs> yes. that whole Saturday at oh, Tuckerbag yes. Armadale, yes. where people go for the fresh French bread. No, nah, no, nah. nah, not a scrap. Empty shelves because of me. Oh, I know. Oh man, shame, I you? got torn a new one, but I didn't lose my job. I should have. I jo- should have. John, uh, well, I, I, I can't say I've had those sort of jobs before. But what about when you punched someone? Mm. Well, I've punched someone plenty of times, mm. and then you're sitting in the grandstand. Not a great feeling, Swanee. No, you know. But um, yeah, probably. <sighs> Well, so I've missed training before, mm. and I've said that I was uh, I've, well. I was, I was honest that mm. I was late mm. when teammates have said I was sick, and I showed up not knowing what the excuse oh, was. Oh no! And then yeah, that's, that didn't go down that well. No, mm. it didn't. But it's fair to say I didn't miss baking all the bread for Melbourne mm. one morning after having a big night. I should yeah. have lost my job. I wonder if this guy, mm. this guy, hopefully hasn't lost his job. But this will go down in history, mate, uh, as the day that. He should have. Must credit Absolutely. the designer. Uh, we'll take your calls next. I've got one too. Great. But, uh, when did you almost lose your job? When should you have lost your job? Hollywood Jack's got a cracker too. I love it. Designed Dino, it. When yeah. you stuffed up at work and should have been fired. Back when Kate, Tim and Marty had a show on Nova and they were doing Arvos, mm. they did a party at night and I, I just got loose at this listener party. Mm. Too far. Uh, went way too far. Got... <laughs> Got real hammered, and I was doing. I used to do uh, the show straight after Husey and Kate, right? Anyway, I got so my bender was so out of hand, yeah, that I slept until ten thirty the next day. Mm. I had people knocking on my door. How is that possible? And I had Husey and Kate on the radio saying, "Has anyone seen Dino?" Oof. And um, call us if you've seen him. <laughs> so I rock, rocked up at quarter to eleven. Should have been here at nine. <laughs> walked straight into the boss's office and said, "Look, I'm." I just don't know how this I've happened. I've done this, yeah. yeah. I've done this. Please punish me or not. Let's talk about it. And her energy was like, ah, oh, you lovable scamp. Bloody get on the radio. Like, really? I was like, punish.
Excuse me. I love audio of that shift in the last hour and a quarter. Oh, boy. Did you pick someone up at the party too? Yeah. Yeah, I so you, you really went hardcore. Yep. Oh, yeah, you went hardcore. But, Swanny, I should have I should have got something, but she was like, like squeeze my cheek, oh, yeah, you cheeky boy. That's great. No that's, pink slip. That's when, that's when radio is the best industry to work <laughs> in, when they th- say you cheeky scamp. <laughs> Craig, what do you got for us? Craig. Good, uh, good morning. Much like you, Dino, I think I got a little bit excited uh, one game. Uh, I was working at a bar in Geelong that sort of kicked off at midnight. That's when the festivities sort of began. Mm. But uh, prior to that, won a game of football and that beautiful tradition of the beers coming out after the game and singing a song. We got carried away and uh, had to get a cab into work. And by the stage I arrived to work, I was that polite. My mates had to sort of put me in front of the bar that I was managing. And uh, I had to ask patients to cut their own lemons, to pour their own drinks. And uh, yeah, it, was, it was reckless. It was reckless. And how did everybody, was everybody on board like, mate, we've been there. We can, we're happy to cut our own lemons and pour our own drinks. It was sublime, to be honest. The bar manager, whilst he wasn't happy that people were virtually grabbing the bottles of tequila and vodka and pouring no drinks, he said it was a bad version of Coyote Ugly. So he just got around. That was great. They're dancing on the bar. That is oh, great. Yeah, 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 great. Yeah, the the human perfect. spirit cannot be uh, cannot be killed off. Magnificent, Craig. Uh, six bottles of Zonzo Estate wine, authentic Italian cuisine at Zonzo Estate. It's in the heart of the Yarra Valley. Joanne. Good morning. Hello. <laughs> Back in the day, um, I used to be in charge of paying the sales tax for a big international company and forgot to do it one month uh, until the fine came through for $100,000. Oh, jeez. A bit of Shakira about you, Joanne. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I was pulled into the boss's office to explain and... I was only like 20 years old. I was crying. They um, let me send a message to or a letter to the ATO asking for a second chance and to take the fine away. And I luckily um, was able to to get the fine taken away and kept my job. Oh, wow. Wow. Very persuasive, Joanne. (laughs) You would have felt sick when you realised you'd done that. Oh, sick, and I've never, ever paid tax late since. No, yeah. that's right. And there would have been a bit of bullshit in that letter as well. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't she have really oh, amped not. it up, the sob story? <laughs> of course. Of course. Joanne, in terms of a prize, donuts or wine, how are you feeling? Uh, donuts. Oh, I'm not a oh, donut. Wow. Interesting. It's that time, is it? Oh, hey, Jackie. What, what time <laughs> is it? It's Daniel's Donuts time. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, Jack. You got a 12-pack of Daniel's, which means 13. What a tricky bastard that Daniel turned out to be. Nick. Morning. Hello. Let me go. When should you have lost your job, Nicky? Uh, morning, guys. I work for an airline and it's a bit like today. Nice cold morning, nice and early. Started the aircraft using the ground power generator and not paying enough attention. Wanted to get back inside and drove off with it still connected. Rip the front half of the plane to clean off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. Nick. Oh. Out live power cables all over the time. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, oh, man. And, and him up on, not paying enough attention and kept driving. Yes. Still, of course, you can't hear the... Down and said, yeah. You can't hear the destruction behind you. No. Oh. Got flagged down and what the hell was that? How much? How much uh, yeah, money-wise? Like 300 and something thousand. Yes. <laughs> They would have uh, yes. you'd be paying that off for the next 30 years. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> and aircraft full of passengers ready to depart. Really? And then they just hear a big bomb. Oh. The side of the plane's gone. Oh, Nicholas. How long did they have to stay on the tarmac for, or that's it? Everyone off? They hadn't left the bay yet. I'd just started it up, ready to push it back, and yeah. Nicholas, oh, no, they were, yeah. they were oh, off right. within about half an hour. You they? obviously didn't lose your job over it, but was there any sort of ramifications? No, I got to sit in the room by myself for a few hours while I waited for <laughs> drug testing. But <laughs> <laughs> this is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie podcast. Doctor David Craig. He was on recently, and we discovered he's a pretty bloody good chat. You may have seen him on Hunted, and you can catch him on the final two episodes of Hunted, 7.30 tonight and tomorrow night on 10. Here's Dr. Craig. Grand finale tomorrow. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you.
I've got one question for you. We're going to get into the ins and outs of, of the series. All right, let's go. But one thing I have noticed on social media and in the show as well is that there's something in these contestants that they share with serial killers where they like to taunt their potential capturers. So some serial killers will, um, you know, visit the scene of the crime when they know the investigators are there or they take out ads in papers or send letters. The hunted contestants are doing the same thing. What is that about the human psyche that, that needs to do that? I, th- it, I think it's a, a phenomenon called duping, deli- duping delight. Duping where, delight. Yeah, where they actually get a thrill uh, of uh, getting away with something. And so they want it. They are so confident that they just want to push it a little bit more. And, that, and that's the term I put to it, is duping delight. Duping delight. Is yeah. that an unwise move? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, taunt the hunters at your own peril. Yes. Oh, <laughs> so exciting. Dr David, another a question. Uh, my laptop. Oh, yes. yes. Should I put a sticker over the camera? In terms of can people hack into that? And see, watch what I'm doing. Yeah, I have a band aid over mine. Fair income. I have. That's so, all you, you need know, to know. Yeah. That's very interesting that yeah. you have a band aid over yeah, mine. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Jonathan. Dino doesn't want any shower scenes in the background. I do. Put that away for his work <laughs> colleagues. Uh, David, what is it? You've been in the shadows for the best part of 30 years. Yeah. Uh, you've been a lead investigator in many huge investigations. What does your family think of this whole situation? Now you're out in the open. Well, they're giving me a bit of stick, actually, because all my kids grew up and they weren't allowed to say their last name to people. We had to move. We had to keep everything on the yes. down low. Wow. Don't tell your friends what I do. Just tell them I work for the government or that I work for Telstra or I, you know, and then all of a sudden when I decide to flick the switch, suddenly it's everywhere. So, yeah, they're giving me a bit of stick for, for coming out. It but. must be a huge shift for you to be, I'm guessing that you're stopped at supermarkets and at the servo and, you know, people want to say hello to you. What, what's that? like? Um, look, I haven't actually been stopped anywhere yet, so okay. I must be quite forgettable, which is actually quite no. <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> But it is very different for me. It is um, just uh, to know how public things are, and I'm not a you know actor or a media person, so I just be myself and see how Do I go. Do you feel exposed? Do you feel hunted sometimes? No. No, I don't. I, and, and the people that I was was being hunted by, I figure, I hope that a fair bit of fire has gone out of their coals by now. It's 2013 since I left the AFP. But there was certainly, you know, some corrupt police and some terrorists that um, probably would like to know where I was. So, yeah. Unbelievable, Amazing. isn't it? Um, investigative techniques. Is there Was there any concern from law enforcement or from yourself or some of your colleagues that some of the investigative techniques would be revealed to all the public out there for potential offenders? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really good question, John. I, um, I, uh, uh, I was a caveat. I only ask oh, good questions. Well done, John. Oh, he got a round of applause. <laughs> well done, John. I didn't see the audience. Um, <laughs> I, uh, um, look, it was a caveat with me being involved, and they asked me this right from the start, and I said I wouldn't be a part of anything that introduced new law enforcement techniques because I, I don't want to give the edge to, to the bad guys. Law enforcement enforcement are working very, very hard all the time, as are our intelligence agencies. So anything we're doing on the show has been done before somewhere publicly. Otherwise, I wouldn't be part of it. And, and there's technologies that I refuse to be part of. And, and look, the producers at Channel 10 have been fantastic. They completely understand. And we don't need it, to be honest. We don't need to be exposing um, the latest stuff yeah. and then be vulnerable to, to a terrorist attack. Yeah, you know, sure. That just doesn't yes. make sense. Just coming back to the to the TV show, obviously the contestants aren't crooks, but they're crafty. Um, was there one tactic that one of the teams or one of the members of one team uh, implemented that impressed you? Mm. That we've seen oh, so far. Yeah, I think that, you know, the fake bookings in different places, I think that was that was really good. You see, I don't know a lot of the of what happens on the episodes because I haven't seen them, right? So right. when yeah, we had that, like last night when Chris and Panit went past our granddaughter's car, I had no idea that was happening. So I was watching that for the first time because in HQ, we don't know where they are or how close mm. we were. So it's it's really opening and, and um, there's a lot so of... So ATM vision and things like that, they're actually real... From the security cameras of ATMs. Yeah, yeah. Well, they yeah. they they either get it or they replicate it. Yes. Um, but it's done 
just like a real job yeah. for me. So, you know, we, we ask for something, we get it. Sometimes we ask for information, they say there's none available, or sometimes they'll say, sorry, you know, we want to intercept this phone. We haven't justified enough to actually allow us to intercept that phone. So there's a referee that is like a judge or a community standard, if you like, that is watching everything. So it's not like we get everything just given to us, you know, so it's just very real life. What about rushing into someone's house? So a friend or a colleague that's potentially helping these fugitives, are you allowed to do that, or you had to get warrants, or how did that all unfold? Yeah, no, we don't. We don't get warrants. We don't have any law enforcement powers, so it's got to be done by consent. And there's a couple of a, a very powerful legal team behind this, I think. So <laughs> <They've wanted laughs> there is a thing called tacit consent, which can sort of it's a bit of a grey area whether you can enter or not. You have to leave if you're asked, or all that sort of stuff. So it's all done. We don't break any laws, and neither do fugitives. That's that's. Rule number one. Fantastic. We've, well, we've heard a rumour that uh, a lot of celebrities have been contacting Ten and Hunter to see if they if there's going to be a celebrity version. What do you think? Oh yeah, I um, I think it would ma- add, add, a, add a degree of difficulty because straight away people are recognisable. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be a problem. But then you have some very loyal people as well that would go, "Hang on, I mm. really like Daniel McPherson. I'm going to hide him because I don't want anyone to to help him." That's you know, true. Find him. So I guess it'd be, yeah, I don't know. It'd be an interesting dynamic, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. Yeah, but we'll we'll hunt anyone. We we are ready to hunt twenty four seven. That'd it. be good fun. And just finally, mm. uh, just quickly, the tax department is sort of chasing my whereabouts. You got any tips <laughs> for me? Uh, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Hand yourself in, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so to David Craig. What a show. Congratulations. It's, it's really taken off. 7.30 tonight and tomorrow night on 10. Final question. Yes, no, or, or no comment. Are there secret tunnels under Melbourne, under the city? Partially. Oh, what? Oh, Dino. Yes. Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. Uh, some amazing games of footy over the weekend. But just let me, Brownie, let me, let me tell you something. We talk about a lot of commentators on this show. But one man never gets enough spotlight. The great Dwayne Pipe Russell. One of the greats, Pipe Russell. Oh. He's magnificent. Uh, his vocal cords are amazing. Got a beautiful tombo. I did the game with him yesterday, Essendon versus North Melbourne. But I'm concerned about potential diabetes. What are you talking about? Well, uh, you go into the rooms and pi- into the commentary. In preparation, Pipe's got about five cans of Coke. What? Uh, full got, strength or zero? Uh, full strength. Pipe. He's got some Red Bulls. Pipe. Um, uh, some chocolate milks. And yesterday, yes. six chocolate bars. Pipe. Like f- full length chocolate bars. No. Lined up, ready in preparation. With all due respect, Pipe, you're not 21, man. Mate, we're going to have to get him a checkup. That's a lot of sugar, Pipe. I'm going to. I'm concerned he's going to tip over, <laughs> you know, into the deep into the third quarter when things get excited. But Jesus, <laughs> let's he, get him to do a blood test, and because it's FM radio, yeah. we'll re- do the results on air. I want to see a live blood test from <laughs> Dwayne Pipe Russell on air. Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie, the podcast. Good morning, Melbourne, and if you're anything like me, you are just surviving the weekend for this moment when Sam Pang. <laughs> Arrives in his Coburg Lions. Go Burgers. Jump. Mighty I'm Lions. Still, I'm still waiting for mine. Well, it's, well when you give me the cash, <laughs> you, I'll you get you one. Me, you told me that they were gratis. They're, they're, they, I've, it's been, they're in uh, shipment, you know what I mean? Like they, yeah, I'm sorting it out. They are good, Good too, morning. because they're thick. I had an important decision to make this morning. <laughs> there was straight, the Coburg Lions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or there was the hoodie of... Uh, what, what is it, Swanee? You gave to me a maze. It's a charity. Mm. And I went for a maze. But Sam's wore the cowboy. We could have been wearing the same hoodie this morning. I and like I... the thick red hood. Yes. Well, there's a couple of things. One is Brownie had to wash his. We're talking about these wonderful the hoodies by the Coburg Lions. Brownie mm. washed his with care, hand washed, dr- didn't put it in the dryer, draped it over a... you know, Hydronic the... heater panel. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I know what that means. I that... said to the kids and Kylie, do not touch this jumper. Yeah. <laughs> Let me handle this situation. Yeah, get back. Yeah. Not great in the laundry, mm. but it was great when it came to the Coburg Lions hoodie. That, yeah. oh, that really speaks volumes. Of this jumper I'm wearing, it's a similar yes. situation. Don't come near it. My bras are the same. Mm. Many, I, I, that's a rule for life, though. Don't mm. come near your bras. Yeah. That, I would think I mean, that... Yeah, obviously. The, yeah. Um, no one has for a long time. The, <laughs> no, exactly. They've left them alone, haven't they? And good on it. Good on you. It's fine. Exactly. <laughs> Hey, uh, the, I was I was uh, thinking if Brownie had worn his Coburg Lions mm. the hoodie in this morning, we would be wearing the same thing. And it reminded me uh, <laughs> about this, the great saying that if now I'm not I'm not saying generalising. I'm just saying this. I got told this that if 
I was at a party once where if two, if two women wear the same dress, mm. it's the end of the night. It's the end of the world. Mm. If two men wear the same shirt, they're best friends for life. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> 100%. Get a camera. <laughs> Get a camera. Come on. We're best, best friends. Friend. This is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. Now. This is what happened over the weekend. New sport, drama and entertainment. It's the weekend that was with Sam and Ben. Oh, what a weekend it was, eh? Yeah. I um I haven't actually seen you since uh, since the Neighbours finale. Yeah. Because that was Did on... You watch it? No, you catch up with it. I haven't caught up with it yet, but mm. I, I was curious to know how they how they got everyone back. Well, for what reason? If you know what I mean, was it? Did you watch it? I didn't, but I know all the answers. Go. So Ryan Maloney's character, the great Toadfish Rebecca, yeah. uh, got married, mm. and people zoomed in with messages of support. Right, and including so, you know Holly Melance and Natalie yes. Imbruglia, and you know uh, what is it? Um, yeah, Kylie and Jason came back for yeah. the, what? They came back for the wedding. Well, yes, allegedly, but, but she it, had four lines. I was going to say that, but four words. I'm sorry. Did they even know him? Hadn't they? Hadn't they, hadn't they left the series before he'd entered the series? Listen. Good point, Bang. Right. Continuity issues. Absolutely, there what is. What a negative Nancy! I, Just let it. No, exist. but friends, no. friends of the extended family often will pop up at a wedding. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. so even. The, yeah. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Free grog. The one. Free grog. Absolutely. The one. It's, but I just. I just wanted to. I know. I know. It's a few days ago. But I just wanted to. You know. Put a full stop on it because it's been amazing. It's been a wonderful breeding ground for a lot of. Uh, um, you know. People have gone on to other things, as as you mentioned the other day. But, <laughs> you know, there's a, it feels as if neighbours has sent them into superstardom. A lot of uh, big names, obviously Margot Robbie and uh, whoever else has oh, been. So yeah. many of them. <laughs> Margot <laughs> Robbie to name Just one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. Whoever, whoever else. Hey, yeah, all the others. There's know. not many others. Oh, there are. Oh, John! There's dozens when, of when others. Going, with you. When you're going for a name, just nothing there. Yeah. No. Like Guy Pearce. Yeah. Nowhere to be seen. I understand. Delta Goodrum. Yeah. Nowhere to be seen. Craig, Craig McLaughlin. <laughs> Craig, well, yes. Well, where, where, where was Craig, by the way, in the did you, culture? Did you he was available, see, I think. <laughs> did you see he made his own tribute to his character and posted it on Facebook? Yeah, in the overalls. I haven't watched it. In one of the most cringeworthy. Oh. I watched it through like my fingers, like oh. Well, was he Charlene's brother? Yeah, yeah. Yes. That yeah. was some good casting. They really look alike. Yeah, and, absolutely. And yeah. Really did back then too. Yeah. The one thing I do know, and I was a bit surprised at because how, so the idea that uh, they were trying to work out what how the plot lines all fixed and all that. But anyway, did if you didn't if you missed it, you should know that Harold Harold was back, diagnosed with cancer, yeah. and to ensure the financial future of his family, he has started cooking crystal meth. <laughs> What a finish. Mate. Whoa. In a yeah. camper van as well. But that's got, yeah. Mate. That's got spin-off written all over it. Well, I don't think it's done. They keep talking about Neighbours coming back. What about that as a spin-off? Yeah. And no one would expect it. No exactly. one would suspect it's it. It's given you gold here, it's Neighbours good. producers. Um, Luke Carpenter didn't show up. That was a concern of mine as well. What do you mean? He wasn't there. No, he wasn't there in the last episode. Oh, that's so, a big miss. She misses that's her. That's a big miss. Um, the great Tom Oliver. Yeah. Tom Oliver. I went to a I went to a fortieth birthday on Saturday night. Really? How are the whippersnappers? <laughs> Kids, <Sorry>. they're, <laughs> they're unbelievable. They're unbelievable. I I almost had to ask for the music to be turned down against <laughs> one. This, this is what's happening. I'm telling you, I'm, I, parties could be done for me. Is that the age now? What are a you load at the of age <laughs> where you sort of now push over, slink over into the corner with the oldies, or are you still in amongst the forties? I seem to be caught. I seem to be yeah. caught in the middle. You know what I mean? Mm. The dance floor's there, but then, you know. You don't know whether you were that creepy uncle that if you do join the dance floor. That's a good point. Yeah, they're looking was, at you. I was looking for the words to describe exactly the feeling, and creepy uncle was wonderful. Thank do you, Do you Brandon. dance? Ha! Oh. <laughs> Tussie. Oh, oh, work at the podium. Nick, nickname, the sugar at, nickname at high school was Footloose. Whoa! Whoa! What? <laughs> Johnny Castle, his nickname was. Oh, Footloose. Oh, mate, I can... S- smoke up a dance floor. I got it's that dirty dancing. Reference. Thank you. I didn't get it. I did. Oh. The old Kenny Loggins. Yes. Um, the I last... think that was one of my guesses for the Masked Singer, Kenny Loggins. Kenny Loggins. <laughs> oh, you can rely on me for all the big names. Is he, de- is he dead? Still alive? No, still alive. Yeah. When's, when's that show start? Sunday. Um, 
I just wanted to... Uh, I finished with some sad news, Dino. Oh, brother. Oh, Archie no. Roach passed away yes. at the age of 66. Mm. Very, very sad. In Warrnambool, in my hometown. Uh, May have what? He's from here. He, he, was, he spent a lot of time down our way. Yeah. He's a great man. I what? saw... I, I reckon I saw him and Ruby Hunter at the cherry tree one night. It was unbelievable. His, one of the great love stories. I huh? know, and she died... 10, or she did in 2010, Ruby Hunter. But Archie, you may know, this was oh, his man. big breakout in 1990 from the... This was uh, they took the children away from um, charcoal, the man. Good pipes, Brenny. Amazing pipe. Can see it. Oof. Snap from their mother's breast, that this is for the best of... 66, yeah. Dana, is a fair effort considering he had a stroke about just after his wife Ruby Hunter passed away and we thought yeah, we thought it was going to be a June card, a Johnny Cash June mm. yeah, like Cash the, the heart, situation. Yeah, the heartbreak yeah. could get him. But he's, he's been singing with an oxygen tank in the last few yeah, years. Yeah, well, he lost the lung. Mm. Still performing. Fair effort. Paul Bloody Ke- great effort. Paul Kelly, an early supporter of his uh, after hearing that, and then and he ended up <coughs> opening for Tracy Chapman and Bob Dylan and... Mate, it was, it's an amazing, it was an amazing life. and so uh, Get into him on Spotify. Yeah, absolutely. Archie, Unbelievable. Don't move. Want to see what happens in the studio? Check it out on Facebook. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Hey, question. Have we got enough out of Jack's Daniel's Donuts endorsement yet? Or well, we, we still got an appetite for let's it? Let's just revisit it in case you're hearing this for the first time. Yeah. Jack... Our baby yeah. has grown up commercially <laughs> and he signed his first endorsement deal with Daniel Do- Daniel's Donuts. Yeah, and... And he, it's it's manifested itself in probably one of the weirdest out-of-character voiceovers I've ever heard. I personally. agree. It's jarring. What do you Quite mean? frankly, the Have ad... Have you heard the ad? All I've, with the Daniel's Donuts thing, all I've done is any time it comes up, I ask him... What time is it? Is he has to say. It's what do you have to say, Jack? It's Daniel's Donuts time. And I thought, yes. now, he's, he's so chipper. Yeah. And it's not his character. No, I know, but I like the idea that you know we had this, and I would just keep doing it until it crushed. You know, until he was broken. Mm. But he had that hasn't happened. He's up. Yes. He's still up and about because obviously he's got a credit card to pay off. That's he's right. got relationships. He's getting that sweet, sweet donut cash. Someone, it, someone uh, asked me to electric on Saturday night at like midnight if I had any donuts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, but can you please get me a vodka lemonade? Oh no! Someone <laughs> came out to you at a club yes. and said, "Do you have any donuts on you?" Yes. Yeah. Why don't you take donuts out there and just try a putz, a first class putz. Yeah, no, but Jackie, Pang. The problem is the oh. ad itself isn't Jack. What's that? The oh, okay. The vibe of it is not Jack. What's the time? It's Daniel's time. We love Daniel's Yummy chocolates, rich custard, or traditional cream and jam <laughs> with over forty deliciously fresh flavors. Daniel's Donuts has the donut just for you. Head to the win page at novafm.com.au for your chance to win this week's Daniel's Donuts party with 52 donuts delivered to your workplace by the Casanovas. Daniel's now, Who is that? I, I want to weigh in here. I've <laughs> known you that? for six years. Seven, yeah. I've never heard <laughs> that voice oh. and that character before. Creepy. In, in nearly seven years. Unsettling. They've probably edited it. There's no. probably some post-production. No. Nah, man. Oh, my God. You're as bad as a maths contestant <laughs> blaming uh, the editing. My point was they were better off just getting you to do your catchphrases like, say, yo, for us. Yo. Daniel's Donuts. You know? Yeah. yeah. Tie a Jackieism to the brand. Correct. But this Jackie. creepy ass ad sounds like you're, you're driving around the streets trying to lure people into a van. So I thought, what and it would that sound like? Do you think, do you, are they, have you any feedback? Because yeah. what, like Chrissy's right, this is your, this is a, you know when we met you, you were uh, you were a little in the Nova Boy suit or whatever, and now you're dressed as a mobile phone. Exactly, yeah. that's right. And now you're doing, you know, you've yeah. got commercial. Uh, uh, I think they like it. I, I love I love Daniel's Donut. <laughs> so it works. Have they asked you to dress as a donut? At any no, stage? No, they haven't. They haven't. I did use a pool toy though when we shot a video in store. Yeah. Wacky. They added wacky donuts. Uh, you had to go in store. How yeah, did you feel did about that? Yeah, that's okay. Like that. I had to dress as a dinosaur for Supercoach. Yeah. I, do, I, <laughs> I remember that. I, remember I do that. have to say, Daniel's donuts are really delicious. They're elite. Yeah. They're great. Well, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a comment about that. It's just interesting yeah. that you know what's happened. And but no, I haven't had to dress up. But would you agree, Swan, that the energy of that read is creepy guy in a van? Yeah, particularly the way it creepy starts. The yummy of- chocolate. Yeah, well, let's have a listen. Will you give it? Yes, John. Will you give any direction about you changing the tone of your voice? 
Or did you just sort of amped up and just try and give it a little bit of, you know, gravitas and some smoothness? Yeah. No, man, I was rushing home on a Friday, so I just smashed it oh, out. The only thing is, too, there is, you know, he, he, Jack is a chameleon. So mm. he's, you know, yes, he's kind of, we go, he's like, he's cool and he's yo, he's at the clubs. But then also you think about how he's represented this show. He's actually, people love him. He's up and about. You know, you've got good, and you don't have to be that tired, cynical thing. This is this is a good thing. This you know? fun. It's nice to I'm, have I'm some always positive up and energy. About. Yeah. I don't know, man. I just I can't hear that ad without thinking of you driving around Richmond in a van. Yummy chocolate, rich custard, or traditional cream and jam. <laughs> Off he goes. <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. And Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on over 100 while Shakira's ships don't, hips don't lie. Here's Nathan Fraud. Number oh. 35 for Richmond. Oh, hey there, Nathan Fraud. Let's talk footy with you. Yeah. Explain that sledge, Nathan uh, Fraud. No, just the fun thing to say and how you going, brother? I'm good, I'm good. It's been a while. I haven't seen you for a while, so it's good. It's great good. win, great win yesterday. Thank yeah, you. Yes, no worries. It's always good to come in on a win. First things first, Flatly. Brownie Brownie's a bit flat. Who did you play on? No, nah, I played on a few legs last night. Um, mm. We were leaking like a sieve in the first half, so there was a few goals there. Who did you? Mr. <laughs> fix it. Yours. And who did you? Just give me one. Give uh, me one of the names. Cameron Hipwood and McStay. Yeah, and how many? How many goals did they kick? Four, a couple. <laughs> You know what? You know we're all ready to celebrate if no, if they don't kick any goals. Oh, we'll no. get, this yeah. this duty all go up. But if you have goals kicked on you, it was you a tail of two halves. The first half was leaking like a sieve, and then I think they only kicked three in the second half. They did. You guys kicked yeah. ten. What did Dimmer say at halftime? Um, oh, he just said that there's a moment in the season where you got to stand up. And um, to be fair, that was probably our, our season on the line and yeah. finals on the line. And um, he did say we, we were playing for someone pretty special with Shadow in his 300th. Shane Edwards' 300th game. Right, I, know, I know we've said in the past that the milestones make I love it how uh, every time coaches, <laughs> you, you, they get asked in a press conference leading into a big milestone game. Joel Selwood had his 350th well, uh, as well. And the coach, oh, no, you know, it's got nothing to do with it. You know, the players, you know, they're professional enough not to need to worry about a milestone, all these sorts of things. So it sort of throws shade at the journos. And then when you're winning a milestone, they go, oh, yeah, yeah, we referenced that play. You know, they, they did it for they did it for Shedder or bloody Joel Selwood or any of those boys. So you I absolutely to, um, reference them, don't you? We do, yeah. I used yeah. to believe a big time about milestones, but then... Um, we're up by 40 points against Gold Coast in my 100th and lost. So. <laughs> 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 I don't care about you, mate. That's an indication of your standing yeah. at the club, though. That's, that's right. a good exactly reminder. Right. I don't care about me, but they obviously care about Shadow. <laughs> Roddy, one more serious footy question. We haven't seen you since that draw from last weekend. Yeah. Why Why wasn't your mate the, with the ball? Uh, Noah Bolter. Why was no. there sort of no awareness? Could you not hear the siren? What What happened there? Well, that was Noah Cumberland. Yeah, both Noahs had a bit of a moment. Um... Yeah, I don't know, just a young player, 18-year-old, just had a bit of energy, I think, and rush of blood. And, mm -hmm. yeah, with the week before as well, young Jake Hart, same thing, came on a sub and a bit of rush mm. of blood and, um, yeah. Well, young Noah must have a good personality because he kicked five straight yesterday. Oh, not much phases, old Noah. Yeah, um, yeah just um, he's, he's come a long way. Dimmer said in the press conference last night, um, he was very raw early days. He moved in with me. Um, for two yeah. weeks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's enough to undo anyone. Anyway, uh, <laughs> miracle he's still playing yeah. the game. <laughs> and uh, had him for two weeks as um, soon as he got drafted. And um, we had the 3K on Saturday, and it was Friday night. And um, I had a few of the older boys message me and say, what are you doing with Cumbo? He's just put a photo up on Instagram with a Peroni and a large family pizza. <laughs> <laughs> you got a 3K tomorrow morning. So. <laughs> just explain to Swanee what a 3K area is. Oh, just, as, yeah, running three kilometres as fast as you can and uh, I can tell you a large family pizza and a Peroni is <laughs> no. probably the last thing you want. <laughs> not a good idea. No, not a great idea. <laughs> so he's come a long way, the young fella, but, um, yeah, hats off to him. Did you watch this game, Christine? I watched I had... a little bit of it. Really? I watched it. For a while there, I thought it was going to be a draw. Oh, yeah, it was tight imagine. there. It was about yeah. two minutes ago. It was 96 apiece. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if it was, yeah. Can you talk to us about the uh, the the state of this season? They're calling this one of the greatest seasons ever, Nathan, as a, as a player who's actually in there. Are you are you aware of, of of this wonderful season and the tightness of the, uh, on the what, the top about 10 teams, isn't it, Brandon? Like, it's, yeah. it's just an, it's amazing. Yeah, well, well you're ninth at 114%. Collingwood's third 
on 105%. Mm. So it's pretty stacked up. It just goes to show that the difference this season between the the Rans and the also Rans will be whether you can win close games or whether you cough it up. You guys have been coughing them up until yesterday. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm not one to buy into footy stuff in the AFL up and that, but a few of us did the um, ladder predictor the other day just to, because like you said, it's it's oh, very man. close and that. What's so the ladder predictor? Is oh. that like Zoltan from Big at Tony <laughs> Island? You yeah. go to the AFL website. So, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't you guess all results from other games? Yeah, all results, every game, and then, um, yeah, just puts out where you, where you are on the ladder. So, so um, do you think Dimmer would be wrapped if he knows his players are doing ladder? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's hey. how desperate we're Oh, yeah, we're going to finish seventh. Oh, that's all I don't good. have to worry in, about playing the next three weeks. In, in their defence, they did have a Peroni and a large pizza <laughs> while they were doing it, so it's all right. Peroni's uh, here. Uh, we've never done this, but if you're a Tigers fan, you want to ask them something. Can't hurt. 13, yeah, 20, 20, 20, 20. Put your teeth in before you ask it. Do you want to see what this looks like? Well, get the visuals on Instagram. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. My mate Nathan Broad's in the studio, and we've never gone to the, the phones for Broadie. Let's see if it's a good idea. Danny from Doreen. Danny, what's your question for Nathan Broad? Good morning, everyone. Uh, my question for Nathan is, do you guys see yourself making the grand final in the next five years? Five years, Rory. <laughs> Got me to answer that, Danny. <laughs> what is, as in... Oh, well, I'd hope so we'd, in, we'd make it within the year. Hopefully this year we make finals and we, we make it this year. I think we're a good chance. Well, what does the ladder predictor say? Are <laughs> you going to win the premiership? <laughs> ladder predictor doesn't have us losing a game from here on in. Whoa. Uh, finishing seventh, so... Nice. Dan, is Danny oh, still there? Yeah. Dan, Danny, are you, you're back for Richmond, obviously. Absolutely. Is, is Nathan your, your favourite player? He's one of them, absolutely. One of them. Oh, thank you, Danny. Danny. I'm glad we've done this phone call thing off a win. I'd be nervous <laughs> if we lost. <laughs> Danny, do you think he's a rat bag? What vibe does he give out, do you think? Uh, he's a sweetheart. Oh. oh thanks, Danny. Danny, oh. uh, Dino has got some new teeth. <laughs> and obviously... Uh, he had a couple of discounts there, but he's turned up with 18 Richmond jumpers today that Brody has to sign. You think that uh, 18 signed Richmond football guernseys only by Nathan Broad will be enough to get the Invisalign over the line? That's the... Oh, maybe. It's just, it's just a coincidence. You, you might want to run them past Dusty just, as well, just to make sure of it. It was amazing. Um, it was an amazing sight to look over during the song and see Dino... I thought he was bringing a load of washing over. <laughs> he brought the biggest pile of jumpers over to Nathan. And it, was, it wasn't... What did he say? Well, it was like a... What, what was he goes, Brody! Yeah. Brody. I need, I need your Hancock on something. Yeah, yeah. and um, I need the... They're, they're for my dentist. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> and shout out to Effie and all the gang down yeah, at... Mate, no, right, no, no, no. Oh, yes. I'm all for it. Well, thank, yeah. you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Danny. Thanks, Danny. I've got a few questions for you. Um, Brody. You know, uh, in the newspaper over the weekend, on the on the website, news.com, the uh, cadet journalist um, has got in a spot of bother by printing a caption under the photograph of Ash Barty and her new husband, um, something that shouldn't have gone live. It says, warning, not for online till Barty posts it herself on social media. Robert Craddock will come back to us with the time we can post. Um, Ash's dress is from Susan Howard. Must credit. So that was the caption under the photo. And we did a phone earlier saying, you know, when should you have been fired? Have you ever been close to being off the team for something that you've done? Uh, and you oh yeah. would have had jobs too because you're a late starter in the AFL. Yeah, I was a plumber for a bit there. Um, <laughs> that that cost me. I had a bad day on the plumbing job one day. Um, yeah, hit a main line and... Um, <laughs> luckily, it was only water and wasn't the old um, the poo line. Yeah, yeah the poo um, line. That didn't go down too well. But uh, footy wise, um, yeah, I've, I've been pretty pretty well. I was the incident in twenty seventeen, which um, wasn't wasn't very proud of. But since then, I reckon I've been good. Taylor came into my life, and yeah, she's been good. Straighten you up. Straighten me up a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you love? What do you love? Because are you married yet? No. No. Nah, end of October. Engaged? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. how's the guest list going? Mm. Oh, I mean, it's always what's tough. You've got about 40 on your playing list at Richmond. That's so you've true. Got to try, you've got to cull a few. Yeah, we, it's like they come in packages, so it's like 100, 120, 150 and all that stuff. Oh, jeez. Um, How had, many? We had the initial. Oh, we had above 120, um, and we had to make the tough call on a couple. And mm. um, Yeah, it's it's horrible. I hand that over to Taylor, and she can make the call on that, but... Yeah, it's not nice. Who got the bullet? <laughs> no. Dimmer. <I> won't say. <laughs> it was one name of someone. No, that I, Dusty. I can't. I can't. No. 
<laughs> Are all your teammates invited? No, all the, my team. Oh, not all of them. No, no. Whoa! How does that work? Oh, well, that's just, Mate, by uh, the end of this segment, a lot of club politics now. <laughs> after this yeah. round, Randy, by the end of this segment, the, the Dino's dentist will be going to the <laughs> to your wedding. Leper, leper in or out? No, nah, leper's out. Yeah. Whoa! No, no coaches, oh, but, um, that? He's heard about a leper's alter ego after a few drinks. <laughs> Frank, Frank the, the Tank. tank. Uh, what oh, about Barmy? Barmy and Barmy didn't make the cut. I think he's a, oh, I think he's a flight Jesus. risk. Jesus. He's, he's, a flight flight risk. he's a flight risk. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got to stay He'd out. be great. He'd be a great <laughs> MC for you. Who's going to MC it? Who's oh. going to MC it? I've got a couple of mates back home, which um, yeah, I'm a bit worried no, about. No, scrap and bring Barmy in. Yeah. Barmy. Barmy. Oh, the thing is, my logic to it, you need Barmy there because obviously after the wedding, there's going to be a lot of, you know, a lot of politics from the people that uh, weren't invited to the mm. wedding. Mm. If Barmy's invited to the wedding, he can calm the waters yeah. behind the scenes. He can do it all, but yeah. But all of a sudden, if he wasn't invited, well, he might be a double agent. He might be knifing you as well. <laughs> well, we've got, um, with the footy and the end of season, that it's a bit hard for, um, to organise a Bucks, but we are doing footy trips, so I'm kind of counting my Bucks as footy trips. So we've got 35 players coming on that. So, um, yeah, that'll be, it should be good. Is anyone from Love Island going to the wedding? No, no. Not one? No. Sophie Monk. Yeah. Why would, why, Monk. Why would Love Island, why would that happen? That's where ta- that's the, why we know Taylor. Rock that's up. right. Sorry, for, I apologise. I do know that. <laughs> hey, I got a question for you because I don't want to upset our uh, footy listeners. Emma, what's the latest with your teammate Dusty? Is he playing at the moment? No, nah, he he, um, what's his injury? he tweaked his hammy again last week. I think is so. He, is, he, um, is he done? Is that it? No, I think we're getting back. Yeah. Once the crowds start getting a bit high, I don't think Dusty plays below fifty thousand. <laughs> so is tweaking his hammy again um, a euphemism for signing with another team? <laughs> yes. Are you going to give him a I farewell game before he goes to Sydney? What do you, what's the plan? I think so. Yeah, I think we'll give him give him one last send off. Brody, how big is Dusty's <laughs> telly? Telly? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I haven't been around there for a while. Whoa. Have you ever been around there? I have been around there. Yeah, yeah, we went around there a couple is of that, times. Dusty going to the wedding. <laughs> He is coming to the wedding, actually. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Oh, so, yeah. I would have picked. Go. I'd pick Barmy over Dusty every day of the week at a wedding. It's an error. You've it's made an error. There. Who you got yeah. this week? We've got Port Adelaide in Adelaide. Oh, yeah, big geez. game. Who, you, who will you play on? Do you know? Or Not sure play? yet. No. Oh, no. no. Why would you? It's only Monday. <laughs> <laughs> you rock up and just see who's there, rock eh? Up and do it, Brody. No. That eighth spot could be yours. <laughs> it's a real fight for that one. Le- is there one spot left, John, in the eight? Is that it? I think so. Well, ladder like, ladder well, predictor says we are, so we are. This ladder predictor is very concerned. So you got Port Adelaide and then who? Um, Essendon and, oh, sorry, Hawks Essendon. Hawks yeah. Essendon. Oh. So, yeah. Uh, Brody, you're such a cutie and always have been. I've just, uh, Jack showed me a photograph that you've posted to your Instagram account of you. Oh, was it? Is it on Brody's account? Yeah, um, of you when you were little, and you look just like Daniel Johns from Silverchair. The long locks, the Identical. blonde locks. Identical. It's so cute. Check yeah. him out. Check him out. Well, we're not going anywhere because it's time for oh. Brody's serious analytical footy question of the week. <laughs> Nathan, the most tackles by a defender this season is a hundred and ten. You've recorded just 24. Not a big part of your game, is it? <laughs> Whoa! Oh. Hey, there is a question there, oh, isn't it's, there? It's, you can't tackle if you're first to the ball, so... Oh. <laughs> Show on that, Brody! He's fresh off the win today! <laughs> Brownie, the podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. Welcome to your Monday. We're all here for you. Jonathan Brown, Samuel Pang, Dean. Oh, Christine, you're going on a big walk. You're I embarking am. on a big walk. Today's I the first day. Am. First day of August. That means uh, mean? it's Fred's big run slash walk. And I'm, I've am i committed to walking 300 kilometres in the month of August. And I'm putting it out there. I want to raise $100,000. How many eyesights is that saved? Would that save two? At least two. At no, least. I can do a. I no? can do a it's calculation. Dino might be able to give you a hand with all those Richmond jumpers. He just got <laughs> Nathan Broad to sign, and then has convinced him to take them into the club to get Dusty to sign them. Listen, he's that'll a, go a long what, way what, towards hundred thousand. He's, he's a guest. You're not supposed to do that with the guest. He's a friend. He's a friend. Yeah. You uh, pulled in a favour. Four thousand people. Four thousand eyes. Four thousand. 
Amazing. Uh, just quickly, you're all concerned, though. You've got a sick kid, so you probably won't be able to do your walking until this evening. I know. Which will be in the dark, and you've purchased a balaclava. I have. Are you at all concerned that have walking the that? streets tonight... I have not. ...that there may be some calls to Triple O that there is a burglar roaming the streets of Burundara? What do you think, Sam? Let me know if I get away with it. As the balaclava... goes. Oh, but that's mate, that's fine. She'll get shot tonight. No, uh, I'm telling you, she might make the three hundred. Well, you, you put you put it up over your nose. Then now you look like a ninja. <laughs> she does. That's <laughs> unbelievable. Don't mess with me. Go to our Insta stories I, and chip in. Yeah, chip in. I think I'm already at about two and a half grand, which is unbelievable. You haven't walked yet. I know. So you're it's frauding. Fine. You're a fraud. No. <laughs> hey, this is the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. I want some tropical stuff. Big news. Big news to start the day on Monday. The oh, happy first. birthday to all the horses yes, out there. It's my birthday. August yes. the first. But my boy's her, oh, birthday today. Bit of a lad, of course, just retired. You've got Still more his than birthday that. though. You got more. Bit of a lad. lad. Yeah. Are is you it, only talking about Bit of a Lad? You've got other horses. Well, Bit of a Lad is enjoying his first birthday in real time. He's becoming an equestrian horse one. Meatballs. Being retrained. And, uh, what a great galloper he was. Just he brought so many great memories oh, yeah. to our lives. Why uh, did Bit of a Lad retire, do you reckon? Uh, well, his last start was, was this, and it was a great highlight. Okay. They're off and racing in the Scotty Stewart Broly, and Bit of a Lad missed it by seven. Seven. That's why he's now an equestrian horse. Uh, seven. <laughs> seven. At the beginning, bit of a lad missed yeah. it by seven. The Jeez. race had been going for three seconds. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Fair <laughs> to say, we didn't win that race. I, told, oh. I said at the time, the only reason that he actually went out of the barriers is because the horses for the next race started, they were right behind him, <laughs> yeah, starting to get ready, they were pushing Such him out. great audio. No, I'll the other, but this is big news, by the way. You've got an announcement to make about our... Our great friend, uh, George, at the Q Golf Club. Uh, yeah, George is... Uh, well, well, George owes me money. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, so... Is I, that the announcement? <laughs> yeah, I, feel like, I feel like it's you've like, gone off script here. No, I don't think that was well, you. I just wanted to get it out first that uh, <laughs> George owes me 60 bucks. Yeah, and cool. uh, so I'll be hunting Georgie down. Well, f- f- what for? For lamb chops? No, winnings. Mm. Winnings oh. of uh, defeating the last two rounds because he's partnered up with Sam. Wrong choice there. Mm. But uh, George, he's, uh, he's made some changes to his life, uh, you know, because we know George had a, a mini stroke on the course a while back and, uh, he, he, you know, engages sometimes in some extra activities on the golf course. He'll have a little scotch here and the odd gasper <laughs> here. Know, I don't know if that was well known, by the way. I'm not sure that was uh, well, for, for public consumption. We're going to read out his medical <laughs> results now, live on the radio. Now, why are you holding a clipboard? Well, watch out. What changes has he made? Uh, are we doing this on air? Are we doing this on air? I don't think so. He's, he said he's going to... You gonna... love him. No, we he's should. He's friend. No, we should. Nah. <laughs> People don't need to know what George is up to. Listen, like, I'll just straighten up, Come on, have Brandy. some respect. All right, Emma McKeon, by the way, has become the most decorated... Com- are you watching the Commonwealth Games? No. Oh, I watched the bike crash. Whoa. Dino explained the bike crash today in the velodrome. I want to see it. Oh it was unbelievable. It's a, it's a good... It's a good Question. It's a good uh, point you make. We can just gloss over the fact that um, McCann's won her 11th gold medal this morning, becoming the most decorated Commonwealth Games athlete of all time, Ooh. and just get straight to the, the cycling crash where one of the cycles end up in the crowd. One of the bicycles is in, a, in the crowd. How does that happen? English cyclist Matt Walls catapulted over the bar- barriers and into He's the crowd. He's hit the walls. He's hit the walls. Yes, well done, Stay Swan. Down. I want to know, well, I'll get Dino to mm. describe it. Because I was coming yeah. in this morning listening to the early show. There's the way only, you described it was beautiful. There's only amateur footage of it because it's quite distressing. And if you, you can find it on YouTube, he doesn't flick up or anything. It just looks like he ascends like an aeroplane taking off, like he's got a jet engine behind The way him. that you were talking about it, and I haven't seen it, I imagined the little silver ball in a roulette wheel. Yeah, pretty you know, much like, like bouncing that. Bouncing out, it just lifts onto people. So, it's a little bit like a race car, Swanee. Yeah, you know, sometimes those race cars they get the air underneath yeah. the, the, the yeah. car and they fly up into the exactly high the fence, the safety fence on the outside. So Matt Walls has gone into the crowd, and two other riders were taken to hospital. The spectators were treated for minor injuries. One of the riders is from that, of course, that cycling powerhouse, the Isle of Man. <laughs> so we're, we're going to, you know, so... Um, <laughs> so you love the, I love the Commonwealth Games. You just, uh, Great. just get together every, for every four years mm. and we beat the crap out of some <laughs> yeah. countries that... It, when you first look at them, you're not even sure they're countries. That's right. That's great. Well, just remember that... Uh, you got to Google it. <laughs> yeah. My well, first experience with the Commonwealth Games is 1990 Auckland Commonwealth Games. Mm-hmm. And... 
that was huge. You know, we dominated that. And back in Melbourne, when the athletes got back to Australia, we had a ticket tape parade. So it's, hard to, it's amazing. I don't think the same thing's happening now. It's just not the public sort of attention towards it. No. It's too, it feels too easy for us. It yes. feels like a weak Olympics. No, no, that's wrong. That's mean. But it's good for the athletes <laughs> to get some uh, notoriety, though, because they Absolutely. don't get as much outside yeah. the Olympics. It's an incredible <laughs> achievement. You, you know, you have you have comp- all all permission to just lead, lead balloon yourself by the way, anytime you want over there. By the way, Brandy, you're the, you're the mayor of beer in this town, right? Oh, what a disgrace. The latest excise increase. What's happened? The tax is set to increase by 4% or $2.50 more per litre. This is for a, a, a beer, making the largest jump in 30 years, right? So, so a, a beer at the pub could soon cost punters. If you're buying a pint, say, it could a pint could cost $15. Yeah. Hey, it's so un-Australian. But I've also heard that coffees could be up to $10. What? Oh, buy, buying your own drinks at a bottle shop. This I, yes. I was. I immediately went to. Oh, well, okay. I mean, yeah. that'd be good for bottle shop. Well, that's your oeuvre. That's no way. That, that no way to avoid the hike either. With taxes on the carton to rise to eighteen dollars eighty. Oh, that's a lot. That's they're rising what eighteen dollars. Mate, the but Brewers I, Association, of which you're, are you the president? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> is pleading for some relief, saying people could be paying up to fifteen dollars for a pint under the new increase. That's too much. Too much. What is it now? I don't normally... I don't oh, drink Hold beer. on, Brownie hasn't bought a beer at a pub for no. 25 years. <laughs> no, years. I bought don't one the other day. It was about 11 or 12 bucks. Did it hurt? Were you all right? Absolutely. I can't believe I haven't got a gold. Where's the gold card from CB? How did, did you, this uh, read happen? read my peeps in there. How did this happen? Did Disgrace. you cry into it? I think it's so my I drank it a little question. bit slower. Um, I tell you what, the I don't normally swim in these waters. Um, no, but the, the, the waters where you pay for things. Yeah, that's yeah, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it, the other waters of the price of alcohol. Right, okay. I think my theory is, is a major contributor to our drug problem here in Australia. In what way? Well, because for young people to go out and uh, buy alcohol, that's a bloody expensive night out. Like now you're looking at three and $400 nights out, plus the, the kebab you get on the way home or the Maccas. That's mm. the big one. Like so... The problem is it's a hell of a lot cheaper to do drugs. Mm. So there you go. Have a look at that politician. No, it's a very good point, by the way. You've What's my pretty... catch cry? I need a catch cry <laughs> then. That's, a, no, that's my opinion. You might not like it. That's my view. Let's say it again. Say yeah, it again. That's, it. Yeah, that's, my, that's view. my view. You might not like it, but that's my view. I think you've got a good point. <laughs> don't you reckon? Yeah, I don't know too much about illicit drugs, but I have heard they're not. It's not that expensive. No, nah, not the, not where I'm getting them at the moment. It's pretty <laughs> right. To, good, it's a good competitive. It's, it's very competitive. <laughs> it's a buyer's market, if you know what I mean. No, listen. <laughs> hey, you may if, you, if you're on Twitter today, you may be aware that there's a, a name um, that's trending called Bill, Bill Russell is trending. You may wonder who that is. The greatest, uh, well, one of the greatest basketballers of all time, but definitely the most. Winningest mm. a basketball player of all time in the years. NBA, so winning the boss for the Boston Celtics. Oh, He's you known don't as need the to tell captain. me. Of course, I need to tell you. I've got a tattoo. Yeah, you loved him. Mm. Uh, he died. He died peacefully asleep. The only thing I'd like to point out: you you played at the highest level for how many years? Fifteen. And how many premierships did you win? How many How many years did you actually reach the ultimate goal that you set? Three out times. For? Three out of fifteen. Yeah. This man played in the NBA for thirteen seasons. And he won 11 championships. Wow. Jesus. <laughs> you imagine the 11. Well, there's no salary caps back then. Oh, right. Let's not, de- <laughs> let's not, let's not diminish the man's achievement. <laughs> What's wrong with you today? You <laughs> might not like it, no, I didn't but sleep that's Melbourne. my view. I had to commentate the Essendon <laughs> North Melbourne game. <laughs> 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 that's, why right. grum- yeah, that's why yeah. he's grumpy. Yeah. He's that's also a will to live. No, that's a, I like that little bit of insight too. I'm gonna I'm just just like as you out of George, I'm gonna out you. You're not overly happy with your bosses at the moment, are you? Oh well, geez, that might have been just a little message towards me. Mate. Just sharpen up, big fella. You're on Friday yeah, night footy. On. You're on Saturday night. You're on Monday night the couch. Why would they put you? Why would they give you Essendon versus North Melbourne? You're supposed to be a blue chipper. They are rivals. No, Remember mate. That? Carey and Lloyd, no. Marshmallows. You may be on the outs. There's, there's tropical news. Fox Footy are falling out of love with you mm. if they're starting to give you that games like that. You're just a workhorse. You're just, a, you're just like they just roll you out mm. for any game. Ne- might, Sam. Next minute, Nick Del Santo will be doing Carlton Collingwood, <laughs> and I'll, I'll be, <laughs> I'll, I'll be pushed aside. <laughs> 
He might punch you if you keep on. No, I'm going just saying, like it's things aren't things aren't great there. Brownie, give us a name. Who's the one person that's messing with your schedule? Dino. <laughs> Come on, what? Um, Stop I tell it. you, what I enjoyed that. I love the fact that I was there to witness Dwayne Russell eating six. Because he's got all his, his pre-game meal. He has to have the energy, gets the sugar levels up, yeah. so he can really reach the heights if it's a close What's game. What's he eat? Well, he goes, for, he goes for about four Cokes, some chocolate milk. <laughs> Full strength. Oh. A few Red Bulls. And yesterday. Is he 11? Six chocolate bars. He was oh ready. Just in case that, uh, he, uh, mate, we've got to check his sugar. Ready for hey, what? Ready to throw up. That be, sounds disgusting. Be dead in a week. Mate, he, had, <laughs> he had Twixes, he had Snickers, <laughs> Polly Waffles, oh my everything. God. There's no Mars bars. I, I, just, I would just like to point out that, um, that, that Fox Footy had you commentating <laughs> North Melbourne versus Essendon. That's the big <laughs> That is the big news. And just to just to explain to people that you know maybe don't watch or don't care. Oh, sorry. I was watching that. That's a boring show. It was a meaningless game. Boring no, game. No, with no, no, neither team will be featuring in September. There are a lot of other good games, relevant games that were on all weekend, but obviously they gave them to the the A list commentators. Mm. They're the ones that you know they want on the telly. How King. does that feel hearing that from? It's just true. Sam. That's yes. how it feels. Thanks, Sam. Oh. David King. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> That it. That's it. Truth teller. <laughs> Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. Mystic Chrissy. Very specific. You know those little individually wrapped coffee lollies? I do know them. Do they mean anything to you? No. I see the colour red. <laughs> the on the other side of the road has red bricks. What will she predict next? Next. Next. My mind has been flooded with messages this morning and oh. I I don't know what they mean. I don't know who they're for. I think it might be for you, Karen, from Yarra Glen. Hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Why do I see the star sign straight away? Gemini, Scorpio. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, didn't even didn't even have the courage mm. for one. You got you know, <laughs> two star signs you threw out there, right? Uh, You're great. No, you don't know any Gemini's or Scorpios, Karen. Oh, I know a Gemini from long ago who was my ex fiance. Interesting. Whoa, it's a he long still way back. he still thinks about you. Oh, <laughs> gee, I hope not. <laughs> We've well. got him on the other line. <laughs> <laughs> Go to your front door. He's waiting there with a the Casanova. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Pass, Karen. <laughs> Pass. You like a um, you like a loop a hoop earring. Uh yes. Whoa. Yeah, I've got a queen size bed around you. Correct. Whoa. It's an unusual Hoop size. And two in a row. It was an unusual size. Normally people have kings these days. No, they don't. Or or like king singles or doubles. Queen is. It depends. She did say ex fiance. She mind me sleeping with her and us. Queen is the least popular size of bed. Is that right? It's mm. a good tip. Just before you go for the next one, you're going yeah. for a hat trick here. Okay. I see a white dog, Karen. Ooh. We've got white goats on the property next door. Yep. Oh, that's what I'm saying. That's a stretch. White dog. She ran over one last week. <laughs> I'm seeing around you, you two and John Farnham specifically. Oh, love John Farnham. She's back. Lo- tra- tragic, tragic John Farnham fan from way back. Oh, yeah. Let me circle this yeah. to show the naysayers. Yes. Mystic, I wonder what her favourite song is. If you could tell us what her favourite song is from Johnny. Straight away, I got um, Two Strong Hearts. Oh, that is in probably my top three. Oh. I would agree with that. And what about Touch of Paradise? Yes. Mm. What is your absolute cool. favourite? Mine is one. Oh, no, I think I'd have to go with You're the Voice. Oh, yeah, of course you would. Yeah. Basic. Oh, but, yes. you, know. <laughs> you know, bagpipe. You know, bagpipes. Oh, whoops, I stuffed it. Freedom would have been. What were you trying I to see do? Ro- I see it. Yeah, Karen. Woohoo! I was going to say the voice from the grave, but he's still with us. Oh, no, no. <laughs> All right, Mystic, let's do this. You're on fire today. I see, Karen, your feet are bigger than they should be. Mm, no, sorry. Have you got small feet? Just average, size eight, just average. No, I'm, I'm, I How tall are you? 
about five, uh, 165 centimetres. 165. So what's that in feet and inches? Five, five, but your feet, I think. But your feet are four, four foot, four. <laughs> your big yeah, feet, they're like boats. Like, yeah, they're going I'm like Big Bird. <laughs> That's right, Big Bird or Krusty. One more. Roller hit. skating. <gasps> Oh, back in the day, back in the 80s, had my own pair of roller skates. There it that's, is. That's what I'm seeing yep. you yep. as a as a little, as a girl, roller skating. Yep. White the shorts, skates. Yes, Whoa. definitely white. Yes. Whoa. God, I've given myself Parents. boob tingles and that's boob that's bumps. <laughs> Mystic, you've that's done it. Chicken flag. You've, you've absolutely done, done it, Mystic. Six Woo-hoo. bottles of wine to celebrate that. Hang on. You don't drink that much, Karen. I don't actually drink. Whoa! You just made that up, Karen. All right, no, we'll give you, she doesn't drink. She doesn't drink. Listen, you. I don't. I barely break. drink at all. Just get back on it then. Daniel's donuts are all yours. Then is that pretty cool? A twelve oh, pack. That that's a winner. Thank you very very much, all Karen. Alrighty. You're the best. I love you. Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie. Eddie Perfect, a Tony Award nominee for Beetlejuice the Musical, and he's currently starring in the hit musical Nine to Five, which also stars Jonathan Brown's hairdresser buddy Marina Pryor, Casey Donovan, and Caroline O'Connor. He's one of our New York buddies, and you can see Eddie in Nine to Five the Musical at the State Theatre. Tickets available at Nine to Five the Musical dot com dot au. Here's Mr. Perfect. It's always a very emphatic yes when. Uh... Uh, when our producers say, oh, Eddie Perfect's talking about this. Do you want him in? It's always a yes, Eddie. It's so great to see you. Well, I'd love to see you too. You know that, don't you? It's before we even know what it's about. It's a yes, yeah. a yes. Oh, it could be, or yeah. it could be anything. Oh, yeah, okay. you could You could be anything spruiking Daniel's Donuts and, and we would we would get you in. <laughs> but I just think um, in that intro there was a story that I think you're going to really enjoy. Is this about... the hairdresser, Marina and the hairdresser? Yes. What is did going that, on? Did that spark your interest? <laughs> yeah, a little a little dopamine hit okay. in my brain exploded. Go on, go on, a fantastic. I thought it might have. Who's going to explain it? Who's oh, going to do Randy. the honours? Marina Pryor and myself uh, have the same hairdresser. And I'll explain on it. Same hairdresser, different hairstyles though, Eddie. Right. <laughs> but, uh, but that's our two links. So I often see Marina out in the wild. She's a lovely lady and tells me. Very excited to see her on stage with you, mate. Oh, she is so great. I mean, you know how you sometimes work with people and you're like, what are you, what are you how are you happy? Because, you know, a lot, a lot of us are not happy or, you know, impermanent or, you know, mm. edgy. Yes. She's just always right where she wants to be and she's such a joyful person. I grew up with, you know, the, the in the 90s, she was a huge star of the screen. Oh, yes. Always TV ads was like Marina Pryor. Yeah. You know, that's the first over. one, Phantom of the Opera. Was, Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, I remember that was huge with, at the uh, time. With what's his name? Andrew, not Andrew. Anthony Warlock. Anthony, Anthony Warlock. Warlock. Yeah, those two. I thought they were married. Yes. I, they were, like, yeah. I just thought they just yeah, did yeah. everything together. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, the Marina there was Pri- that fantasy. There yeah. wasn't the Marina Pryor story, though. Can you just to to take you? But yeah, you're a, you're a wonderful anecdotalist. You know, words are your words are a gift. <laughs> oh, when Brownie was telling the story, right about the coincidence of him and Marina Pryor having the same hairdresser, <laughs> that was enough. The idea that he tagged the whole thing by making it clear to everyone mm. different hairstyles, different though. Hair you know that, don't you? Go, yeah, mate, we picked that up. Just we know clarify. that you and Marina Pryor don't have the exact. You don't go into the hairdresser and ask for the same. Dude. Just to clarify, I thought yeah. Sam, you seemed a little bit. Confused. Listen. I thought I'll explain. Hey, hey no, you've been to this. Franklin show. Hart Jr., he plays the character of, a <laughs> uh, famous character, and he's the uh, he's the hated boss of consolidated industries. Played uh, in the oops. film by which actor? What's his name? Oh, um, oh, no, sorry. No, no, no. I've seen the film so many times and I'm just too tired to remember. I'm I've sorry. I've never seen the film. I'm going to just admit really? that oh. here in this thing. I, 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 I was in New York when Suzanne Jones, our producer, was like, do you want to be uh, play the villain in 9 to 5, the musical? It's Dolly Parton. I'm sorry, that's a tick. And then, you know, Marina Pryor, Carolyn O'Connor, Casey yeah. Donovan, Aaron Clare. Yeah, I want, to, I want to do that. And I hadn't seen the film and I didn't watch it and I told my New York agent I was leaving and he's like, oh, so... You know, you're cool with like being hung from the roof in like a yeah. sex harness. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, sorry, what, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and um, I, so I agreed to all of that. But I'm like, it's normal to be, I normally get humiliated in everything I do, even if I write it for myself as some kind of form of humiliation. So 
I actually enjoy it. Geez, you do opinion, do you know. some time hanging from the ceiling. Though, a lot of hanging time. In your time. crotch piece. In the sex harness. Yeah. Sex harness. There's quite an amazing moment at the end of Act 1 where the house lights come up and I'm just d- hanging like a, <laughs> like a human tea bag. Eddie, in the room. is there a, a safe word if the sex harness gets you, you know, a bit funny in the crotch? Well, we had to talk about <laughs> safe words, me and the technicians, and, and there there is a sim, s- signal, which is my, if I <laughs> if I cross my legs... That's a sign to come down. But I discovered that the harness is so tight around my crotch that um, I can't actually cross my legs. So there's no getting out of that. Oh, no. I just have to cry or something. Now, Dolly Parton is um, obviously all over this musical. And have you met it. her, Eddie? No, I haven't. But when she when her voice first came into the rehearsal room, because they get her to record these things for every place that this show goes. And so mm. she's like, well, hey there, Adelaide, or whatever, you know, we're yeah. all, you know, <laughs> you know she's, all these places she's never been and pretending like she knows what she's talking about. And um, But the power of Dolly is such that, you know, it's so effective. Yeah. We're all like, oh, it's Dolly's in the room, even it's the like pre-recorded a, version. It's yeah. like a real-life angel. Is 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 talking to you? She is a very special woman. I'm, I've been a fan of her my whole life. You know, I want to ask you, what is your favourite Dolly Parton song? If you have one, I I heard this song that I'd never heard before, but I heard it in cabaret when Ash Flanders performed it um, at the opening of the Brunswick Ballroom here in Melbourne. It's this mm. song called "He's Alive" um, that she that she sang at some kind of crazy awards night, but oh. it's this it's this really interesting sort of storytelling song. Um, sung from the perspective of the apostles the day after Jesus has been crucified. And, wow. And really? it's like, you know, it's really like kind of country and moody all about going to the tomb and he's not there and where is he and we're, like, we're under siege. And it's, a, it's an amazing... And she wrote it. I don't know who, I don't know who wrote She's it. She's amazing. Mm. Wow, that's a very... I got some. I got some. He's alive. Wow, the backstory and the power is very different mm. to my choice, which is, of course, her duet with uh, Burt Reynolds called Sneaking Around. <laughs> <laughs> From the best little whorehouse in Texas. But that's fine. We, you and I are very different. Look, that's a good, there's a dolly for everyone. So on your favourite... There favorite, really is. Your... My favourite is Here You Come Again, without oh, question. Boy. Without question. Please don't fill it before the chorus. I get out now. What about Jolene Brown? Jolene's fantastic. Island's in the stream. One of the greats. I'll be there with Kenny. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, can I ask you, um, you know, like we saw you in New York. Yeah. Which is uh, 15, 20 years ago now. 28 years ago. Oh, it was so long. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. I, did it reopen this year? Yeah, so it's back on Broadway, but in a new theatre at the Marquee Theatre, and um, it's doing really, it's doing really well. We've got the original cast to come back, and there everyone's happy and healthy. And did you go back for reopening night? I did go back for reopening night, and there's a couple of crazy things that that have happened. One is that they, um, all of the art that people used to send in, and we used to get like bundles it every day and it covered the mm. inside of the Winter Garden Theatre. That all had to come down when we left the Winter Garden Theatre but they created this um, uh, like a, a tribute wall for all the fan art that goes through what they call the breezeway where the Marriott Hotel is and it's probably about 200 metres of huge wall covered in um, fan art and it's this oh. amazing overwhelming kind of thing and um, yeah it's it's good to see, it was good to go back to see New York and 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 kind of know that the show was in good shape, but at the same time, it's not quite back to what it was. Now, what's easier, writing a famous musical, uh, an award-winning musical, a like Beetlejuice, or hanging from the ceiling in a sex harness? <laughs> it's a lot or easier. what's more being, enjoyable? <laughs> it's always easier being in a sex harness. And, uh, <laughs> Lesson for life. <laughs> <laughs> take, care. take note, kids. Uh, but if ever given the choice in life, go for the sex harness. Yeah, huh? it's a passive role. And, mm. uh, no, I mean, I, I, I really love acting and I hadn't done it for quite a while, even, you know, with the pandemic in mind. 
coming back to it, we're all like, how do we you have any time away from acting and it gives you enough perspective to go, this is the stupidest, weirdest, yeah. most <laughs> terrifying job ever. I'm so excited. It's right up my alley. I love you. I love Dolly. I love Caroline O'Connor. I love Marina Pryor. I love Casey Donovan. I mean, the cast is unbelievable. Get along and see it. And there's can. weed in it. See yeah. Eddie in <laughs> 9 to 5. See? <laughs> everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> the musical at the State Theatre. Tickets available at 9 to 5, themusical.com.au. You're a bloody genius and we love you. Oh, thanks for having me on, Thanks, guys. Eddie. For Chrissy, Sam and Brown, every show will be back tomorrow. Chrissy, Sam and Brown, yeah. Unless it's a weekend. Nearly the 100.